Hello folks, this is Maggie and we are working on our November December challenge in the Facebook group of digitizing and in the hoop basket. We have pictures of that in the Facebook group. We answer all questions and people share their work. This particular video we're going to concentrate on what you can do in the gold version. Do watch the previous videos because they go into detail about how we're putting and sewing the basket together. And also, if you have gold, what we show you can do in silver, you can do in gold as well. You just have a few more capabilities, but who knows, you might like what we did in silver better than you will like this video for gold. Now, as far as who does this apply to, the versions of MySoNet that we're using the capabilities of or the tools of have not changed that much from True Embroidery or Premiere Plus, Premiere Plus 2. So if you have that older software, even if you have something like 6D or 4D, we have some people in the Facebook group with the really old stuff, you can still do most of this. Okay, especially when I walked through what to do in the silver. If I come across something in the gold that you can't do with the older level of software, check out and rewatch the video about silver. And the other thing for you to be aware of is that I work on a Mac. I am, I just love the Mac version. I think it's so clean and wonderful. Now, if you have the PC version, you have every command I am going to use. You just have it in a different place on your screen. That's all it is. It's just a little bit somewhere else. So once you get familiar with where your commands are, these videos make total sense. And if you don't know where your commands are, all you have to do is pop over to the Facebook group and we'll get you a screenshot with some big red arrows to show you where they are. And the main thing is check out our Facebook group, okay? So now we're going to go into the embroidery module. And here we are. When you open your embroidery module, you get the screen, blank project. I could open things, but we'll start with blank. And the basket is done in the large hoop. If you have a smaller hoop, you have to do some of the pieces separately and sew them together. Now, the first block of the quilt is what I call the front, and the piece is five by seven. And what we can do is we can go into quilt block, and we can say we want a filled quilt block without an inner shape. And I can say I want it to be, a re I have to make sure I have rectangle and not square, rectangle. And I can say I want it to be five by seven. So I say seven inches, that's the dev double quote mark. Enter, and it changes it, 178 millimeters and five inches, enter, 127. And now this is the front square I don't want a cut line. That makes a rectangle on the outside edge. We do not need that, okay? Continue. You can choose any quilting you like. Maybe you like channel quilting on the basket. I've seen some pretty baskets with simply the channel quilting going side by side. So we put that in. And there we have the front center of the basket. And now the sides, you would do the same thing. Filled, no inner shape. And the sides are three and a half inches by the same height. So this is 3.5 inches. Hit enter, you'll see it's 89 millimeters. Continue. Hmm. Do I want the same quilting? Maybe I want my sides different. That's the side. Put one on one side. I just tapped it with the mouse and dragged it. 
I'm hitting Command C and Command V for copy and paste. And I'm dragging. I just tap the mouse down and drag and move it to where I want. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard. And this one has to come up a little bit. And uh, for those of you who don't see as well, you can zoom. I love my little zoom slider. A lot of people prefer to use those specifics. I tend to just zoom and move. And this can come down. I like these close, but not on top of each other. I think the double stitching helps give me a, an easier corner. And I, I clicked in the film strip so that this one would be highlighted. And I can just bring it down and bring it over so it's close. And you can see those bottom lines are going to match up. And I have the front and two sides. Now I just need the bottom. And I have my measurements here. Well, I had them here, but I was looking for something else. Um, the basket is, the bottom is three by seven. So now we go back to quilt block, filled quilt block, no inner shape. And it's going to be the seven long. Oops. My and this one's only three inches. So you'll see it's 76 millimeters for those of you who work in that. Continue. And what do I want the bottom to look like? Maybe I want the bottom to be an echo. There's going to be two bottoms. They're stitched together, but I do like that on the bottom. And it just helps me see the pieces separately. Again, I just click with my mouse and move it. And hmm, this is much bigger. This should be five. Let me check. I must have gotten some measurement wrong here. Don't mind me. Yep, that's five. That's right. Maybe I didn't. Five and three should be eight. So I made them both just a little bit bigger, but that's fine. If it doesn't come out the right shape, just pull it up because it truly doesn't matter as long as these line up and that lines up and you've got a bottom. When we stitch it together, it's going to be fine. I do see that I don't have my sides lined up, so I'm going to zoom in. And this one didn't look like it was quite where I want it. There we go. There we go. That's all lined up. Again, you can use your arrow keys if it, if it gives you any trouble. And now we do have a front and two sides to our basket. Okay, so the next step in using quilt block is if you want a design on the front, maybe you've got something you purchased or something you digitized yourself and you want the quilting around it and not underneath it. And we will talk about how to make that particular rectangle using quilt block wizard now. This would not work if you have the silver level. You need gold or platinum. And for previous levels of software, you need the middle or top level of that software. So we start with a blank project. And it doesn't matter as long as your hoop is big enough. Now what I am going to do is insert I have, I think he starts G, the gathered snowman. It's either starting snowman or gathered. What did I write first? Ah, oh, not that one. That's a gathered Santa. And here's the VP3. And that's the witch. We'll do the snowman because I know he fits. 
Okay, so this is our previous, our October lesson. We talked about doing cross stitch, and I made this from a free hand cross stitch design over at gathered.how. And I could have made my hoop five by seven so I'd see the size I'm doing. I already did this design so I know it fits. And what I do is I copy him and paste him. And I bring him over, but I actually wanted this one. So I'll bring it, see how the boxes are on the bottom. I want him a little up and over and back. And then I flip him. Then I copy and paste. So Command C and Command V. And I bring him over. And right up to that line so he's the same distance apart and I have a little row of snowmen now what I do to do a quilt block is I do command a or control a that would work on your PC and then I do command X or cut so from here you'll see you can say cut and what this does cut copies and removes the item. Now, if you don't remove the item, when you finish quilt block, those snowmen would stitch twice. So every now and then we see somebody come in and say, ah, I went through quilt block and then this thing kept stitching over and what was going on? You have to take the design out of the hoop. If you leave it there, well, I could actually show you. Undo, delete. If I went over to quilt block, and I just did it. Um, that's the five by seven. Oops, I have to paste this. I'm just doing this really fast. I'm gonna walk back and go through this slowly. I just wanted you to see that you would have these stitch, then you would have this whole thing stitch that's gonna stitch the sum in a second time. And you really don't want that. So let's, undo quilt block and we were at command A to copy everything command X or cut and then we go over to your assistance tab and you go to the quilt block it's the one that looks like it has a little bits of quilting around it and we are going to do a filled quilt block with inner embroidery it's this picture and the front square is that five by seven, and we're so far into these videos that you probably recognize the 178 by 127 millimeters. Because I cut those snowmen, you'll see it put it on the clipboard. On a Mac, you don't see the clipboard in different places. You just know, you trust that when you copy or cut, it's there. I say paste embroidery and I continue, and now I can choose the outline margin how far apart. Now I know I don't want it this far, but I want you to be able to see. See how the quilting won't start here for about six millimeters all the way around your snowman. Let's see, I like it in tighter. And I think, I know I had it at three Actually, I'm going with channel quilting, so it's okay. What will happen as you play with it, if you do stipple or one of the others, you can watch this part, and when you get a preview, you might want to come back here and change your outline margin if this doesn't look right. I'm doing channel stitching, and it looks fine in the small bits, but something like echo or contour or stipple sometimes ends down here or it sends up a squiggly line and changing the outline margin gives you a difference. Now the other thing you can change, I already mentioned the front of the boxes, for me it's going to be channel, but you can change how close they are together. You'll see the spacing is eight I know I went with, um, the spacing is 10. I know I went with eight, but I'll show you four just so you can see the difference. See how suddenly your, your quilting is much closer together. And I'm going to go with eight for this guy, but actually 
it's the same thing when you go to stipple and you see you just have a weird little line here and some weird little lines here you can change it so that's spacing five now if i bring it down to three it will be tighter but you see at least this looks like a stipple coming up and a stipple coming up so you can play with the spacing to see and each spacing has options and they might be slightly different you always want to uh, each quilt pattern has different options and this is at a five millimeter i kind of like that um because you don't have any too little bit sometimes i uh sometimes i bring it out and i delete a really tiny corner and just leave it off but that's cute too if you like the echo quilt style i'm going back to channel I want to make sure I've got it at the eight millimeter. I didn't want angles because this is the front, but if you change the angle, basically your lines are going to be going in different ways. And I didn't want that. I want it. Zero. There we go. So this is all I need to do. It's that simple. The hardest part is making your choice and choosing your options and combining your options with the distance you want before the quilting starts. So you, so if you have little inside bits, they look the way you're happy. And this now, if you saw the previous video, we had pasted in the sides and the bottom, and I would just use this piece for the front and have a different front than back. You can also, if you wanted, you could put a single snowman on each side and have three on the back and have stitching all the way around on your basket. Now, the other thing we hadn't mentioned, for those of you jumping ahead, hopefully you watched the first and second video that when you start stitching the lining to this piece and start stitching the sides together, you'll want to insert color changes by changing the color of thread so that your machine will stop and give you a chance to put the lining on or to put the back on top of the front. So there we have the gold specific stuff in our next one. I have a next video slide here. Our next video, we're gonna cover the lines, stitching the front to the back. I'll also be doing some pictures. I know some of you will need that kind of help in seeing how to place the lining down and how to put the back on the front. And as always, do stop into the Facebook group and share pictures of where you are and what's happening. Even if it's a screenshot of the digitizing, I like to see that you guys are doing some stuff with what I'm babbling on about here. So until next time.